Welcome to Physio Theatre. Today's case presentation was brought to you by... take over the world. Whatever are we going to do? <laughs> oh, when you're down and looking for some cheering up, then just head right on up to the Candy Mountain Cave. When you get inside, you'll find yourself a cheery land, such a happy and joy-filled and perky merry land. Welcome to Candy Mountain Vet Clinic. What can we do for you today? There's something wrong with my Laura Pleiadon. She's weak and keeps fainting unexpectedly. Oh, that's no good. While we have an appointment open with Dr. Fuglefish, who specializes in magical creatures, so you can go ahead and take you back to the museum and get you set up. Great. I'm Dr. Fuglefish. Hi, I'm Batwoman. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you What's as well. What's been going on today? Well, this is my magical Laura Pleiadon Lola, and she has been feeling weak and fainting completely unexpectedly lately. Well, that's not good. Well, tell me about her history. Well, this is Lola the Laura Pleiadon. She's 2,000 years old, and I've had her since she was an egg. Together, we've been keeping the world safe from evil ever since, but lately she's been fainting. And the evil's been running amok, and there's nothing we can do about it. Has it been unexpected fainting? Completely unexpected fainting. Just like that! Well, how has she been eating lately? Well, normally she eats evil three times a day, but she's just been so tired and weak that she just hasn't eaten any evil lately. Well, how often does this occur? Is this a regular thing? Has she ever fainted before? No, this has never happened before. It started the other day after her carotid sinus massage for anxiety. The carotid sinus has baroreceptors for regulation of heart rate and blood pressure. Carotid sinus massages are used to stimulate these receptors in order to slow down the periods of rapid heartbeat that Lola has during moments of stress during evil fighting. Well, I think we should do a physical exam. I know she's weak, but let's try to get her up. Okay. Come here, little Leo Floridon. Lola, can I take a look at you? Let's listen to your heartbeat. Well, she seems to check out okay, but her heart rate's a little slow. I think we should do an ECG. Okay, well I'm back with your ECG results and... Well, I think I'm going to have to uh, consult our, our cardiologist on this. That's Dr. Charlie. Charlie! Hi, Dr. Charlie. Hi, I'm Dr. Fuglefish. Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie's personal assistant. You're a lucky man, Dr. Charlie. I need your help on this difficult ECG. I think we have a case of sinus arrest, but I could be mistaking it for sinus arrhythmia. Could you take a look at it and tell me what you think? Well, sinus arrest is normal sinus rhythm interrupted by an occasional prolonged failure of the right SA node. As you can see in your patient's ECG, the heart rate varies, which is often seen in brachycardia. Rhythm is slightly irregular, and you can see that the P wave is normal for each QRS complex. However, two small RR intervals are less than one large RR interval. You can distinguish this from sinus arrhythmia, which is characterized by two small RR intervals being greater than one large RR interval. Sinus arrest is common in certain groups of dogs like Schnauzers, Dotsons, and Cocker Spaniels. I would confidently I conclude so that too. your patient has sinus arrest caused by carotid sinus right. massage and often sick sinus syndrome. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think it's sinus arrest. Well, I'm going to head back to County Mountain Clinic and do some more diagnostic tests. Thanks, Dr. Charlie. Thanks, assistant. Thank you. Well, it looks like it's definitely sinus arrest, but I'd like to do another diagnostic test just to make sure. I'd like to do a provocative atropine test, but I need my technician's assistance for this one. Hello. What exactly is a provocative atropine test? Well, technically, a provocative atropine test is a common diagnostic tool used in sinus arrest. A typical test is when a doctor gives 0.04 milligrams per kilogram of atropine, either IM, IV, or sub-Q. Then, you wait 15, 5, or 30 minutes. After that, an ECG reading is taken. ECG readings should last at least two minutes to get a good baseline. Determining whether a response is negative or positive can be based on a change of percentage off baseline, 
or as recommended, it can be done based on the base heart rate. A positive diagnosis entails a sinus nerve dysfunction with no other evident confirmed causes. Well, I removed a second ECG, and it's definitely sinus arrest because there's a marked decrease in the degree of SA node depression. Well, is she going to be okay? Will we be able to rid the world of evil? I'd say all in all she's going to be just fine, but I would suggest you lay back on the carotid sinus massages and oh. give her a little bit of time. She'll be just fine. If she continues to have fainting, bring her back in and we might need to put in a pacemaker, but she'll be back to ridding the world of evil in no time. Hear that, Laura Pleeta, and you're going to be okay. What's been well. going on today? Well, this is my magical Laura Plea Don Lola, and she has been feeling weak and fainting completely unexpectedly lately. Well, that's not good. Tell me about what's been going on. She's been fainting and <laughs> weakly. <laughs> another definitive test just to make sure. I'd like to do a provocative... Shit, I forgot what it was called. <laughs> do it again. 